Who would y'all pick as the number one producer of all time? Sizzle, Southside. Lex Luger. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, man. That's how we kick. <laughs> In 2008, Joshua, also known as Southside, is in Atlanta, Georgia making beats for the last couple years. His uncle used to steal things regularly, and one day he stole a laptop from an airport that happened to have the beat making software FL Studio already installed. This would unknowingly be the beginning of Southside's story. Joshua's uncle told him to play around with it and make beats, giving him the computer. I was like, learn how to make beats. I just know how to do that shit. With a few years experience, he was beginning to make beats for local rappers. Working in different studios, he eventually met a rapper named Woody Kid, who was part of Gucci Mane's Brick Squad Monopoly. At the time, Gucci Mane had a manager named Debra, and Debra's sons liked to hang out in the studio with Southside, smoking, drinking, and kicking shit. One day Joaquin told Southside to give him a pack of beats and he'd try to get Gucci Mane to listen to him. Southside gave him 10 beats hoping for a Gucci Mane placement. Unfortunately after a few weeks Gucci never hopped on any. Joaquin who was inspired by just being in the studio all the time said fuck it I'm gonna try to rap too. And he would pull up some Southside beats and a few others he got a hold of and record his first ever songs. Southside remembers it taking him over two weeks just to record his first track. He was learning, see that was his first rap song ever. And he decided to go with the recording name Waka Flocka Flame. He would perform this song at Gucci's next show and Southside remembers the crowd going crazy. They immediately started to work on his first project, Salute Me or Shoot Me One. After dropping, this project would give Waka a massive buzz in the Atlanta scene. Although Southside produced a number of tracks on the tape, he would still be considered a very underground producer, selling beats for a few hundred dollars to get by. Meanwhile in Virginia, Lexus, better known as Lex Luger, stopped playing drums in the church band and he's forming a producer group with his high school friends. They would go by Virginia Boys Production. He's making beats on a cracked version of Fruity Loops a friend helped him download. Unlike Southside, Lex turned to the internet for help finding rappers because the hip-hop scene in Virginia was small. In his own words, he was dead broke with his second kid on the way. He would reach out to up and coming rappers on MySpace and emailing his beats to artists, just trying to get his beats heard. He had some small songs, but nothing major. But there was a new song that was hitting the radio that Lex happened to hear one night. That song was Oh Let's Do It by Waka Flocka. It was a new kind of trap music, something Lex had never heard. Lex immediately tried to reach out online, sending messages on MySpace. Waka finally ended up responding and gave him an email to send beats through. Jumping on the chance, Lex Luger would send over 40 beats and continue to send more every few days. When Walker heard Lex beats, it was the perfect match for his new trap style. Walker told Lex he was dropping his new mixtape, Salute Me or Shoot Me 2, and Lex Luger had at least three songs on that. These would be Lex Luger's earliest placements. Lex would continue to send in beats for months after this, hoping something would pop off. But for now, he was just happy to have Waka use his beats for his next mixtape. Mixtapes were different back then. They were the main way to get exposure and get your name out there. Mixtapes were as big as albums, to be honest. With all eyes on Waka, he wanted more beats from all his producers, including Lex and Southside. They started working on Salute Me or Shoot Me Too. When the mixtape was finished, there were three songs Lex Luger made and one from Southside. One of the beats Lex Luger made would be Go Hard. The mixtape was a success right away, but Go Hard wouldn't initially go viral. Waka saw the opportunity to bring Lex Luger over from Virginia to Atlanta to meet and work together. He offered to fly Lex out to Atlanta to work on his first album after signing to Gucci Mane's Brick Squad, as well as meet his other producer Southside. Lex packed his bags and decided he was going to take a trip and work out there for at least a week. He would meet Southside, Waka, Waka's mom Debra. It's my brother bro, he's cool. There were cookouts and blunts being rolled. Lex felt like family right away. They weren't in any major studio, in fact they were just in Waka's basement with no internet making music. They didn't realize at this time that they were changing trap music forever. Lex didn't just stay for one week, he would stay for an entire month away from his kids and he honestly felt really bad leaving them at home. But he became very close with Southside. They began collabing on their very first beats. In fact the first beat they ever collabed on would become the song Bussin' At Him by Waka. Waka was only paying about $200 a beat at this time. They were starting to gain attention in the Atlanta scene for their beats. This is when Waka would joke to them about starting a super producer group. Lex eventually had to go back to Virginia after about a month, and Southside would stay in Atlanta. Lex was having some troubles though. He wasn't able to make as much money, and he even considered taking a job in a warehouse just to pay the bills. In 2010, Waka Flocka released his debut album, Flocka Valley, most of which were Lex Luger beats and some Southside beats as well. 
The second song on the album was Go Hard, the same song from the mixtape. By this time around, the radios caught wind of the song and it would go viral. This would be the first time most of the world outside of Atlanta would hear Waka Flocka and Lex Luger. He went from being broke to having big name managers calling him for beats. It was a hit, everyone wanted to do a verse on that beat. People like Rick Ross and Tyga couldn't resist hopping on the track for a remix. In fact, Rick Ross personally asked for beats. Lex was buying new studio equipment with his new money, making 15 beats a day. One of the beats Rick Ross really fucked with would turn into the song BMF. And now Lex Luger would have two back to back hits, gaining over 100,000 followers in a short period of time, which is a lot in 2010. Lex Luger would relocate to Atlanta with the whole wave behind him. He continued to work with Waka and Southside there. He was rising quick this year and finally he was getting paid to take care of his family. It's funny, he would walk around with at least 15,000 cash on him to remind himself how great this shit felt. Now Southside wasn't just waiting on the side this entire time. He was taking note of what Lex Luger was doing and took huge inspiration seeing Lex have that much money on him. Lex coming to the house with like 15,000 on him. Seeing Lex do that honestly made Southside go harder, getting better and making more beats. He realized it was really, really possible. If Lex did it, he could do it too. He could have 15,000 cash. Southside and Lex weren't in Atlanta for long when Lex Luger got a call about working in New York, making some big work happen. It was a long conversation, but after two hours on the phone, Kanye West would say who he was. Lex Luger jumped on the opportunity. He flew to New York where Kanye West had a studio ready for him downstairs, while Kanye would be recording to the beats upstairs. Jay-Z and Beyonce were there as well the first night. By the time Lex Luger was finishing with a beat, he would go upstairs and Kanye West had already finished recording a verse. He remembers Jay-Z telling him, you know you made it when you got Beyonce bopping her head to your beats. He didn't know if he should shake her hand or hug her in front of Jay-Z. Seeing the opportunity, Lex invited Southside to come out and work with him in New York since he had his own setup. Southside went over and decided to work with Lex and be around the energy. While Lex Luger was co-producing a beat for which would become Kanye and Beyonce's See Me Now, Kanye's manager turned to Southside and asked him if he made beats too. Southside replied, yeah, and Kanye's manager would tell him, well then you might as well give me some beats, maybe I can get you a placement or something you won't believe. When Kanye heard Southside's beats, he told him, get me the instrumental so I can do what I do to this. This would become the song Illest Motherfucker Alive, which featured Jay-Z. Lex Luger and Southside are now the hottest new producers in the game. They were living in Atlanta at Waka Flocka's mansion, which he had just bought from Gucci Mane. There were other producers that lived there as well, like TM88 and London on the track, way before they were anybody's. They started to seriously talk about forming a super producer group, just like Waka had made jokes about years before. They had the names and recognition to back it up now. This would be the start of 808 Mafia. Lex Luger wasn't completely on board from the start though. He didn't like the Mafia part of the name and didn't want to be branded with it. So even though he decided shortly after to do his own thing and not be a part of it, he would still work and produce with them all the time. From 2011 to 2014, Lex Luger and 808 Mafia dominated the trap scene. Every producer had an 808 Mafia or a Lex Luger drum kit on their computer. Southside would take charge of leading 808 Mafia, recruiting new members all the time. Most notably, TM88, Tarantino, Trey Pounds, and Fuse. He focused on branding the group more than just himself. Lex Luger would go on to start touring and DJing shows across the world. With the help of his new manager, Deborah, Walker's mom, who had become like a second mom to him as well. In years to come, Lex unfortunately would fall into heavy drug use and it would start catching up to him. Needing to get super high before making beats all the time was taking a toll. Taking Xanax, ecstasy, and drinking all the time. Southside and Lex would slowly grow apart. 808 Mafia and some other producers would really start to control the trap sound and really blow up. It was becoming a household name. Southside did a good job of marketing and collabing with new artists and producers keeping his sounds fresh. But Lex was slowly getting less talked about. The drugs had finally taken control. Eventually, this would lead to a bend in their friendship. In 2017, Lex would go online while intoxicated and diss all his old friends, coming at Southside claiming he stole his sound, as well as dissing other producers like Metro. He even came for Waka's mom saying she was stealing money from him, which would affect his friendship with Waka now too. Lex says he felt like he was being blackballed from the industry and nobody was trying to work with him anymore. He was fucked up and frustrated. About a year later after spending some time to sober up, Lex would come out privately and mend most of his broken relationships. After apologizing and explaining what he was going through, his relationships with Southside, Waka, and Deborah got better again. 
Other artists who he felt blackballed him would come out and tell him they just felt like they couldn't fuck with him while he was going through all that. As of 2020, Southside and Lex are on good terms again, but I don't know if things will ever fully be the same. Lex is hoping to make a much needed comeback, and Southside is still running 808 Mafia to this day. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this content, consider liking and subscribing.